The BC Ministry of Transportation's plan to build a truck highway through the historic community of Delta appears to be stuck in Burns Bog. Following a series of highly damaging federal and regional government scientific reports on the plan, federal opposition and liberal leader Stefan Dion took a trip to the bog to learn from experts about the proposed route's grave threat to this delicate and invaluable ecosystem. Every time you impact on the edge, you make the water mountain smaller and water is key to the survival of the bog. I want to say how much I have admiration for the people here, the community, who are so dedicated uh, to save uh, this uh, wonderful land. The billion plus dollar South Fraser Perimeter Road is a key component of the provincial government's highway mega plan, the Gateway Program. Dion's visit came on the heels of the fifth postponement of the Provincial Environmental Assessment of the SFPR, which appears to be the result of these damning reports from the Federal Environment Ministry and the GVRD Scientific Advisory Panel on Burns Bog, which leave little doubt that the proposed SFPR route would, in effect, destroy Burns There's Bog. There's a copy of the letter from Environment Canada. There's a copy of an article. The bombshell letter from Environment Canada, written in November 2007, but only recently made available to the public on the BC Environmental Assessment website, warns of major damage to bog hydrology and endangered wildlife from the proposed route. It concludes that the mitigation steps proposed by the BC Ministry of Transportation are, quote, not sufficient to alleviate concerns related to the impacts of the project on Pacific water shrew, hydrology, aerial deposition, and ecological integrity of Burns Bog. The letter goes on to warn, any further disruption of the ecological integrity of Burns Bog poses a high risk to the long-term viability of an ecosystem which supports important wildlife habitat. Such changes are expected to be significant and irreversible with ecological effects that cannot be adaptively managed. Many will recall that the bog was saved in 2004 when it was jointly purchased for 73 million tax dollars by all four levels of government for the purpose of conserving Burns Bog in perpetuity. Unfortunately, not all of the land necessary to conserve the bog was protected in that deal, leaving it vulnerable to the proposed SFPR as this document from the GVRD's Bog Special Advisory Panel states. If the highway is placed through this lag, the outer edge of the bogland, we will fail to uphold the management principles subscribed to in the Conservation Covenant by not preventing any occupation or use of the bog that will impair the current state of the bog or the natural, scientific, environmental, wildlife, or plant life values relating to the bog. Coming up the Fraser River where they're supposed to spawn because the water is too warm and that's one of the things that bogs do, keep the water cool. One of the key wildlife risks from the route is no less than the world's largest salmon run in the nearby Fraser River, whose fate is inextricably tied to the health of the bog. Mr. Dion also heard about the integral role the bog plays in absorbing greenhouse gases and fighting climate change. It's probably the largest carbon sink next to a major city in North America, if not the world. From experts in bog science, Mr. Dion was told that the SFPR environmental assessment application states the following. The Gateway program is responsible for about 42% of the projected total net increase in economic impacts from global warming. Uh, their road goes around the bog to the north and cuts it off from the river. Ours comes to the south along an existing railroad track and hooks up to an existing highway. Mr. Dion also heard from construction managers Greg Hoover and Olaf Nass about their proposal for an alternate route which does not affect Burns Bog in any way and presents a host of other benefits compared with the proposed SFPR. Virtually no loss of farmland, no expropriation of homes and less health risks from air pollution. Mr. Hoover and I, we sort of laid out the plan to do a, a time-friendly time and cost-friendly uh, alternate based on previous experience where we knew we have good ground. But the government engineers or their consultants have a model and they're going to stay with that. While the SFPR sort of. route passes within one kilometer of seven schools in Delta alone, the hoover Nass route affects no schools. Hoover Nass makes use of an existing rail right-of-way far removed from major residential density, which is already entirely owned by the provincial government. Last year, I spoke with the Sunbury Neighborhood Association's Don Hunt in a historic Delta fishing village threatened by the SFPR. 
One of the few people who can claim to have read all 3,500 pages of the Ministry of Transportation's environmental assessment application for the SFPR, Don told me of a shocking statement he uncovered in the government's documents, which suggests an economic upside to people getting sick from air pollution. They do talk about the increased mortality, the increased respiratory diseases, the increased cancer rates that are going to be coming from the South Fraser Perimeter Road and the Gateway Project as a whole. They even go as far as to say that there's going to be an increase in the amount of jobs in the health sector because of the increased air pollution. I offered Jeff Freer, director of the government's Gateway Program, an opportunity to comment, but had not received a response by deadline. The federal opposition leader also heard from Mr. Hunt during his tour of the bog on another outrageous statement from the application documents. Their own documents even state that uh, these routes would, these alternatives would save people's property values, would save green space and, and save heritage. Uh, but they, they think it's more important to give a better viewscape to the drivers. They actually wrote that in their documents. But perhaps the most damning testimony against the SFPR came from Mr. Nass, a retired construction manager who has built many infrastructure projects in the area, including a railway through Bogland years ago. But in the bog, there's nothing except very, very unstable ground. I built the railroad through there, but 50 years, 40 years ago, and we had nothing but serious problems. Do you see a change in the bug over the oh, years? Yes, and what well, it's smaller. Change? It's smaller. Speaking from his wealth of experience, Mr. Nass explained the overwhelming costs and technical challenges to building in the bog, making it, for all intents and purposes, an impossible project. It takes about three months for first each layer to slowly compress, about a half a meter every three months, and uh, uh, we need about. 50 or 60 layers. Gives you an idea how long it takes to preload this road. They're talking about doing it, that's my experience from having done it, and they're talking about doing it in two years. So that's the dream world that some of the engineers are, working, are living in. And there you can see the uh, cranberries showing up. I love giving tours in the wet because everything shows up so much better. Your love <laughs> affair with the, with yeah. the box started when? Well, it started in 19... If you are right, and if the road you propose is better and will have less expropriation and less cost and less environmental problems, why it would not be the good road? So I need to look at that. While he stopped short of officially endorsing the Hoover Nass route, Mr. Dion gave several strong indications he would be giving it a serious look. The people here has their own solution and they are sure, convinced that it's better than what the two governments are considering. So I'm a bit puzzled. If it's better, why not to do it? And you understand I'm not in situation to commit today. But I receive a lot of documentation that I will look very carefully uh, because I'm, I'm convinced that the right thing to do is to save the bug, keep up the good work on the environment. To these Delta residents, scientists and tireless defenders of Burns Bog, Mr. Dion's visit and his receptiveness to their concerns was clearly a welcome opportunity. Given the importance of Burns Bog in fighting global warming and in its role as the lungs of the Lower Mainland, they say it's high time to cancel the South Fraser Perimeter Road. With its increasing criticism in the media, this new attention from the federal opposition party and the overwhelming scientific case against the SFPR, it appears this proposed road may be heading nowhere.